I'm Derek Willis. I'm a lecturer in data and computational journalism here at Merrill College. And I was a professional journalist for 25 years before coming here and I arrived in uh, 2021. What makes Merrill a perfect spot for me is the combination of our focus on investigative journalism and also some of the other aspects of journalism, sports journalism, and our particular, the emphasis here on data. The way I try to introduce data to students is that data is oftentimes about behavior. It's about what you do and the habits you have. And all of us have habits, whether we want to acknowledge some of them or not, and you can measure those. And so that's really the core of data is, is decisions that people make consciously or unconsciously to do things. We focus a lot in journalism on what people say, and we should, but we should also focus on what they do because sometimes those two things don't align. And one of the best ways to figure out if someone's actions and words are in alignment or in agreement is to observe and measure what they do. And that's data. That, like, that's just keeping track of things. Maybe, you know, if you've, if you've ever like, kept track of like, books you've read or the meals you eat, then you're, you're compiling data. And what we're really trying to do is make that gap between sort of this idea of data that's out there and what actually people do all the time. Make that gap smaller so that data is more approachable and more just another tool in your, in your toolkit for doing journalism. Data is increasingly a source of information for stories and we have to learn how to interview it, like the way we would interview people. Increasingly, the people and institutions that we cover, whether it's government, sports teams, they all produce lots of data, lots more data than they used to. And so if we as journalists don't understand how organizations are using data, we don't have a complete picture of what they're doing and we don't have a complete understanding. And it would be hard to tell other people, hey, here's what your government is doing or here's what this football team is doing if we're not actually looking at the data that they're producing and relying upon. Teaching students how to work with data and how to understand it and how to analyze it is critical because it's now like a really important part of our society and how our institutions operate. A lot of what I try to do as a teacher is I try to get our students to think about questions, about generating questions and generating better questions. Because it's at the heart of what we do as journalists is we ask questions and then try to answer them. And if you have a good question that you're interested in answering, you're probably gonna be more motivated to try and answer it. And then we can get into answering those questions and having, having them look at those answers. But in particular, I think the really fun thing for me is getting them to spot weird stuff. Because in journalism, we are not mo mostly not doing social science research. We write a lot about extremes. What I try to do a lot is try to get folks to answer, ask and answer questions, and then to look at the results and say, like, what's the weird thing here? What's the thing that you would turn to, you would go home and tell your roommate, this is kind of strange, you don't want to hear this. Because a lot of times, that's what constitutes news. The things that I really enjoy doing, though, is in classrooms especially, is trying to find out what students are interested in, and then kind of steer them toward data in that area. And if the data isn't available, helping them to collect it. So I invite the students to think about like interesting questions that they have about maybe their favorite team or their favorite sport or something they're obsessed with, and then try to figure out, okay, can we answer that question? Is there data available? And sometimes, a lot of times there is, but a lot of times it's a matter of like going out and making public records requests and gathering things. That's really, exciting to work on because you can see something being built. It's not just, it didn't already exist, we're building it for the first time and we're putting together something that's probably pretty unique. And that's one of the really, the best aspects about working with data is that if you're building your own data set for a story, chances are you've got a, an exclusive story because no one else has done it before. 
And for a lot of students, mm. that's not an experience that they get all the time. And to be able to provide that, whether it's through the Howard Center or through our classes, like, that's a really, that's a great feeling and that's something that I just love about this job. One of the things I really, really love about Merrill is that we push ourselves to try to do things that maybe we're not comfortable doing. And maybe, but, but we figure people need to know about or students need to know about. And we all have crazy ideas that we kind of want to try and run with. And I think one of the great things about this place is that we mostly get to explore those ideas and see if they work and see if, if, if students respond to them and see if we can make their experience better by bringing, introducing new ideas to them and new techniques. And not every place is gonna, is gonna embrace that, I think, the way that we have. A lot of my former colleagues who are still in news, on, work in news on a daily basis, they'll ask me from time to time, hey, do you miss being in a newsroom? And I don't because I am in a newsroom. I, I'm in an academic newsroom, but I'm in a newsroom because our students work on real projects and on real stories and that's a that's another real difference I think between between a lot of journalism schools in Merrill which is that we do the thing here like we we, we have our students working on journalism and and that's that makes it better for them but it's a pretty good benefit for me too.